Hot girl summer, what is that? Should Christians be interested in having one of those? Well, today we want to do something a little bit different on the Preacher Girl podcast, which is talk about a hot girl summer versus a holy girl summer. And stay tuned because at the end of the podcast, we have a holy girl challenge for you and there's going to be a prize. So let's talk about hot girl summer, what it is, and should we as Christian women be interested in it, be singing about it, be talking about it, even trying to emulate or live up to that. Um, Now, what is a hot girl summer? According, let me tell you what the internet says a hot girl summer is. Most of us think that hot girl summer is a phenomenon. It's a term that's used to describe a woman who wants to get her body in shape for the summer months or beach ready or whatever they call it. Let me tell you how it's defined on the internet. It said it's a cultural phenomenon that encourages women to embrace confidence, self-love and living their best lives during the summer months. The term, popularized by rapper Megan D. Stallion, focuses on enjoying life, having fun, and celebrating individuality and freedom. When I read that, I thought, you know, those all sound like very positive things, and I don't know who Megan D. Stallion is, but I'm going to go on YouTube and just look at what these focuses on enjoying life, having fun, and celebrating individuality really looks like. And friends, I would like to quote a part of the song for you. I can't because there is not a single line in that song that doesn't contain some kind of vulgarity, some kind of cuss word or inappropriate gesture, some kind of um, derogatory remark about a woman's body, comment about body parts, anatomy, physical intimacy, things like that, things that are not PG or G or appropriate for any Christian woman of God to listen to. Far less is it appropriate for us to strive to. So when we all jump on the bandwagon of saying, oh, hot girl summer, I've heard kids say this in church, that they're not ready for hot girl summer. And when I realized that even this definition is misleading, it is not about freedom, not about enjoying life, having fun and individuality. What it is about is promiscuity. What it is about is addressing immodestly. What it is about is is categorizing all the things that as women of God, we don't stand for and calling that fun. It's about letting our young women think that showing their bodies, um, enticing men or women with their bodies are the things that make a hot girl summer, you know, and, um, And it is the opposite, really, of what we try to do as Christian women. Now, what the enemy will try to do to us is make us feel like because we say no to using our bodies as poster boards, uh, because we say no as using our bodies as ways to cause our brothers to lust, and that I mean our brothers in Christ or even men in general, to, to sin because of the way we look. We don't, because we say no to those things, it makes us seem like we're boring, old-fashioned, fun-less, that, um, you know, all we do is wear turtlenecks and long sleeves, maxis, and things like that. And so um, what I thought, you know, was more important than setting our aspirations on a perfect body, and a perfect body is what? You know, they're thinking, they're talking about positive self-image and saying that every woman should have a positive self-image based on what their butt looks like, what this looks like, and that looks like. It doesn't matter. When the truth of the matter is, those songs and these images push what is supposed to be a perfect body in our faces, and they don't look like us. They don't look like you. Maybe, I mean, not realistically. Romans 12 and 1 says, everybody knows this scripture. Right? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, because this is your reasonable service. Everybody knows that. But then there is this part that says, let me tell you what that, how, how, how that reads in an NIV. It says, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is true and proper worship. Do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and then you'll be able to approve the will of God, His good, pleasing, perfect will. 
So this passage is really telling you that you are to offer your entire life, including your physical body and including the things that we say, do, wear, the way we act as an offering of worship unto God. And that means instead of a hot girl summer, every Christian woman should be focused on a holy girl summer, which is not a boring thing. It doesn't mean you can't go to the beach, hang with your friends, still have fun, still look good. It just means that sexuality and promiscuity and being high and all of the things that that God warns us against because it corrupts not only our, us, but it ruins our lives, that you don't need all of those things in order to have a, a really great summer season. Okay, so... Hot Girl Summer then focuses on physical appearance, social activities, and self-confidence. That's what the world will say. Those are the three things that a Hot Girl Summer is focused on. If you look, if you've got the, the look, the fit, the all the things, and then if you do the fun things, which is out drinking with the girls, going to the beach every day, and just having a lot of self-confidence, that's what makes a Hot Girl Summer. What makes a Holy Girl Summer? It's on being on fire for God and focusing on your growth in the spirit, not just having, you know, a certain type of body. And number three, living a healthy, yep, I said healthy and balanced life. That's going to be the Holy Girl Summer Challenge, okay? So it's focusing on your spiritual growth, being on fire for God this summer, that's hot. That's that's what's hot. And number three, living a healthy, balanced life. So this week, I signed up. Yep, I signed up for a health program. And I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, right? But I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna tell you how it goes. And in this particular program, they're not so much focused on weight loss where I'm, it's focused on building muscle. And I don't intend to be a, a bodybuilder, but I would like to have a tricep or two, a bicep or two, maybe four packs of some you know, muscle and to just get toned up in all those little fluffy areas. Because, here's my why, because I want to preach this gospel as long as I can. I want to be able to run You know, we run 5K all over the United States of America. I want to go to Israel and run. I want to run in Iran. I want to run for the kingdom of heaven, and I want to be able to do so without falling down dead, right? So being as healthy as I can is important to me, and that's why I signed up for it as part of my Holy Girl Summer routine, right? So the first part of the challenge is you must decide today, watching this this podcast, that you are going to make certain changes to your eating habits, your exercise routine, and your overall physical well-being, right? So I'm going to put a link at the bottom of this podcast that you could click on and do a quick registration. Let us know what your decisions are concerning your physical body that you're making for Holy Girl Summer. At the end of this, and we're going to judge this at the the end of September 2024, we have an amazing prize that one of you are going to win. So make sure you tell us, what are the changes you're going to make to your eating lifestyle? Are you going to cut carbs? Are you going to no fast food this summer? What about no sugar this summer? What about, okay, you can't just say you're not going to buy Starbucks. That's not enough. It has to be more than that because you can't, you know, push away the coffee, but just eat all the fries. So tell us what are your decisive moves for the next two, three months, end of September. We're going to end it right at the Preacher Girl Conference, okay? So what are your moves for this summer? What are you going to do to make a difference in your health? To make it, for some of you, it's probably going to be joining a gym, right? And actually going to it. Or taking a, a, um, a Pilates class or running four times a week. I don't know what it is, but do something, right? We want to change the way we want to do something active, right? Some of us, you know, we are out of school this summer. Some of us, your teachers, and you are out of school this summer. Everybody's going to have at least a week to do something fun, right? So what is the active thing that you're going to do? And two, how are you going to change your eating habits 
If you're not already eating healthy, what are you going to do this summer? The second thing, we're going to focus on spiritual growth. So we want you to come up with a definitive plan. 30 minutes of Bible study every day, 30 minutes of devotional time with God, um, uh, uh, a 30-minute run in the morning at the lake, a prayer run. How about a prayer evening walk at sunset? What is it? You're going to read and study the book of, fill in the blank. So what are you going to do this summer that's going to lead to your spiritual growth? So one, we're going to have a physical um, body change, and we're going to have a spiritual body change. And the last thing is focusing on being on fire for God. What are we going to do? Now, for some of us, um, it's I don't want it to just be everything by yourself. My suggestion for being on fire for God is your friend group. You know, if you could get a few girls to do this with you, it's going to be even more fun, more exciting. Instead of just doing Bible study, do Bible study at the beach. That's that's Holy Girl Summer, you know, and and take your blankets, take your 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 food and go have a picnic and there just do a worship picnic. What about that? Take a guitar with you, take some music with you, you know, put put worship in your ears when you go running. That's what Holy Girl Summer is going to look like. So um healthy living and fitness through uh, Christian lifestyle. I just want to talk to you about that for a second before we go on. So when I said in the beginning, I said, just focus on something you're going to do for your body or a way you're going to to eat differently. Um, the summer is the most, um, what's the word, motivational time to get fit. Why? Because you want to go to the beach. You want to go to the pool. There's so much to do outside. But when you're fat and sluggish and unhealthy, fat is not a bad word. We have all got quite a percentage of body fat, right? When your body fat is disproportionate to your height and your weight, you don't feel healthy. You don't feel, you know, even if people are telling you you got to appreciate it, you can want to lose it. Okay? And... um So some tips for staying healthy during the summer. Um, One is an exercise routine. It's like, play this violin again because I keep singing the song to you. It has to become a habit, right? Once you do it consistently, you got to show up. Discipline is a form of worship. Decide what you're going to do. Now, I know myself. I can't work out with DVDs. If I have a workout DVD, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it in and lay on the couch and watch it. That's how I work out on a DVD. So what you need to do, if you know you're that kind of person like me, then you get a couple of friends to keep you accountable and you work out together. Go to work together early and and do what you have to do. You know, find a couple of girls who will walk around the, the neighborhood with you three or four times or swim, hike, do something outdoor. You know, outdoor exercise is so much fun. And um, just as you do your physical fitness, do your spiritual fitness just as devotedly. Make it a habit. How do you wake up in the morning during summer, during the whole year? What's the first thought that pops in your head when your eyes open? And uh, there's a podcast I did a few uh, years ago about gratitude Always finish your day in gratitude. Always wake up grateful to God for the day that you've been given. And it just sets your mind in the right attitude and and the right mood for the rest of the day. And two, get off your bed. Don't lay down once you wake up. Trust me, you will fall back asleep. And the next time you wake up, you're going to not feel good. You're going to feel more tired and more sleepy. So just get up when your eyes open, right? If you need to fall apart during the day, so be it. But get up then and go spend time with God. Don't do it sitting on your couch. Get up and walk around. Go outside. Look at the sun come up if it's that early. If the sun's already in the sky, appreciate the warmth of it for a few minutes. And just let the Lord talk to you for a few seconds. So some more practical tips for a holy girl summer. These are tips, right? I already told you the three things you need to do, but here are some tips. One, eat healthy. Eat healthy. Fill your fridge with healthy things. If your fridge is filled with 
garbage. You're going to eat garbage, right? Not sugary things. Put lots of fruits in your fridge, lots of veggies. If you know you don't eat kale, don't put kale in your fridge. I hate kale. Kale's the worst. I don't think Jesus made kale. I think people made kale. But, you know, if you like celery, if you like carrots, if you like apples, and I know everybody's telling you don't eat fruit. Fruit has sugar. Eat fruit. Okay? Eat fruit, eat vegetables, you'll be okay. Yes, too much fruit isn't good, but too much french fries ain't good either, right? Fill your refrigerator with things that you like and eat healthy. You like smoothies? Mango away. Make your smoothies, put them in the fridge, and drink those. Have your, if you cut up your, your fruit the night before, put them in Ziploc baggies, dump that in the freezer. Every morning you throw that in your blender and go, right? Two, summer recipes. Share refreshing, nutritious recipes like smoothie bowls and salads. Share it on the Preacher Girl um, Instagram. You know, send it to us and we'll post it up and we'll share it with all your friends. And and um, maybe, you know, if you have a really great suggestion, my parents made homemade cashew nuts for me this weekend. And I hurt myself on those. You know, they're unsalted, but they're so delicious. And, and you know, when I looked at them and they're all like gnarly and all the cashews are different. And I'm like, it's so crazy how when you buy cashews, they're all perfect. You know why? Because that's not an actual cashew nut. I went and did the research. They grind up the cashew nuts into a paste and then they pump out perfectly isn't that disappointing? You must read the labels on your cashew nuts. Sometimes those aren't actual nuts. Even if the recipe sells cashews and salt, it's probably cashew puree. That Because no two cashews are supposed to be alike like that. But they're all alike. You know, so anyway, just, nat just natural foods. Um, are so good. And the recipes, share your recipes with us. We want to know. We're tired of the same old smoothies. A banana, a mango, and some strawberries. Come up with something new, right? Three, mindful eating. Mindful eating. That's the hard part, isn't it? When God made the garden, he put food there for us, right? When he said that we could kill and eat as far as meat goes, there was a reason because our bodies were dying and, and he knew that the additional nutrition would be needed in order to keep us healthy. It's not necessary, but it helps. Protein helps. So mindfully eating means that you won't go for a piece of cake and then take a quarter of the cake. Take a small piece. Think about what you're doing. Think about what you're putting in your body. I heard somebody say, that I don't know how true it is, but they said that eating one portion of fries from this company is like smoking an entire pack of cigarettes. That's preposterous. So mindful eating. Number four, social activities. And by social activities, go to the beach, go play pickleball, uh, go to the park for a picnic. Do a 5K with your friends. Do an evening walk. Those are social activities. End up somewhere where you can buy a smoothie at the end of it. We used to have a biking club. And at the end of a 10-mile ride to the Brooklyn Bridge, we would always go and try to find something great to eat or drink. And those are social activities. Four, faith, uh, five, faith-based events. There are lots of faith-based summer events in New York City. I don't know where you are, but there are always summer concerts. There's always um, Bible um, camps you can volunteer at, you can go to. If your church is doing a youth camp, go volunteer. Trust me, it will wear you out, right? It will give you a lot of exercise or just do community service. Right, go help clean up yards and, and do things that if you're not already the most busy woman on the planet, which most of us are. Um, six, you need a community. For this kind of Holy Girl Summer, be a part of the Preacher Girl Summer. It's gonna be amazing. And just knowing that you're not the only one eating healthy, looking better, showing your muscle gain, showing your weight loss. It's just a fun thing that as women of God, we can do together and we will encourage each other because 
That's what we're there for. Iron sharpens iron. There are girls in my community who said, look, if you're doing it, we're doing it with you. If you're losing weight, we don't want you to be the only one. If you're muscling up, we want to muscle up too. And this is what I told them. I said, if I learn something, I'm going to teach it, right? So you're going to know what to do. And the last tip, a practical tip, use the scripture. Matthew 5, 16 said that let your works so shine before men that they will see and glorify your father, which is heaven, which is in heaven, right? So in other words, even by getting healthy, even by living a healthier lifestyle, having a fun and enjoyable season with your children, your grandchildren, your parents, your family, this summer, people will see that and see the joy of the Lord in you. It doesn't take a lot of money. It just takes a little bit of determination. So the Holy Girl Summer Challenge, how does it work? So it's going to be super easy. You just fill the form down below. It's three easy questions. It'll take you 30 seconds. You put your name, your email address so we can reach, reach you. And then you tell us what your plans are for your fitness goals. Over the next, we will, I said end of September is actually the first week in September is when we're going to announce our grand prize winner. Um, sometime next week, we'll also be posting what this prize is going to be. So if you are not yet a follower of the Preacher Girl TV vlog here on YouTube, you need to click that notification bell. You need to not just like this podcast, but leave a comment and, and follow the podcast and let us know that you're part of the community. Also go on TikTok and Instagram and subscribe to the Preacher Girl TV channel so that we can keep you in touch with whatever we're doing right and um, we'll have fun together so that's how you start as soon as you and um, fill out that form below you're entered in the holy girl summer contest right it's not a contest it's a challenge and so i would love it you don't have to post it but take a before picture and then at the end of the summer, we take an after picture just for the fun of it. Just no bikinis, please. <laughs> so preacher girls, I hope that you've enjoyed this podcast, Hot Girl Summer versus Holy Girl, Su Girl Summer. And I hope you're going to take part in the Holy Girl Summer Challenge. Make sure to fill in the form below. And don't you ever forget that if God called you, no one can uncall you. And you don't need a pulpit. You just need a message. Bye.